All right, so um, I, want, I think we might as well kind of get started with some introductions. So welcome everyone to, this is the FAIR Guides section. So I, I'm Don Brower and I'm with CI Compass. I'm also at the University of Notre Dame. And my partner up here is Christine Laney and she's at NEON. And so, the, and uh, we, have a, we have a third person, Angela Murillo, who couldn't make it today. So, but she's also with CI Compass and she's at IU Indianapolis. The formerly known as IUPUI. So, okay. So, uh, welcome. I want to say that there's a, there's a notes doc, so please sign into the notes doc if you can. And I have some links in there. And and this session, I, I like to. I think I think we're going to try to keep it in like informal. And I like to like and discussion. I think we have probably most of it is going to be interactive. So please like start thinking about how you like please. Uh, and that's kind of the goal of the session. So, um, first, though, let's kind of get started with like an inner, with like you know. So the, our agenda is: I'm just going to ha have a short presentation about some stuff that we've that we've noticed, and then, we, then basically some breakout discussions and try to figure, try to see what is out there, and we, and hear from you and your thoughts on um, on on training. So, okay. So the organization I'm with is CI Compass. This is an NSF-funded cyber cyber um, cyber <laughs> sorry cyber infrastructure center of excellence. So basically, what that means is is we um, we are funded to help support the other NSF major facilities with things around the data lifecycle. And this could be like things with cyber infrastructure. This could be things with metadata. This could be things with like anything anything that helps them um, with their mission. So. Um, so the, the first thing is, is that you know our science facilities like, do, they don't exist in isolation. Like like they 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 exist for a purpose. Like they provide data to people. Maybe they have equipment that people can use, instruments or whatnot, or they be a user facility. And and like like everyone else, like they care about showing their usefulness and they and they want to be useful. So. So um, the one thing that we are that actually I think maybe I, maybe now that I'm speaking this is a little, little out of order but essentially but let me start here so um, so one thing that comes up is user training this is people either staff members in the facility and also um, or researchers in the facility and users who are using the equipment and what and like everyone else we care that people are using their data correctly or reusing it correctly. Um, one other thing we care about is like having having a like, like with like state data citation. It helps provide a better way of measuring impact than just like download counts or other like other ways of trying or Google Analytics and other ways of trying to measure usage. And then for facilities where where users can like capture their own data and then take it home, like there is some questions about like 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 how exactly responsible is a facility for the data once it leaves the facility, especially in light. Like the OSTP memo, or the Nelson memo about about um, making the data available. Like, is there any responsibility there? Should that be included in the training? So, provided to users. So, so all right. So as part of like that's not. So these questions aren't really the, the necessarily the impetus. But what I, last year our um, we have a little working group and we actually did a survey of major facilities uh, to assess their fair practices. And we not it wasn't just major facilities. We also included anyone. Although I don't think too many people like in NASA or other agencies were on the invite list. So please, if you are part of those agencies, please drop me a line. But we, we wanted to know, like, like how do major facilities self-assess their fair practices, and can we identify technologies they use? So we did this survey about a year, about uh, last in March of 2023, and we got we got a good, good number of responses, about 54. And I'm just going to show a few slides from this from this survey. So um, one of the so one of the questions that was like, how much of a hindrance have the following been in regards to implementing fair at your facility? And the, so essentially what we want to look at is, is the, 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 on the right hand side, the greens, the purples, and this, and the cyan. So like lack of tools, yes, a lot of people mentioned lack of tools. It's uncertain what exactly they mean by tools. Lack of people understand FAIR. Um, this one is actually not so much, but it is, um, but we'll get into this in a second. 
Lack of time, yes, no one has time prioritizing fair data. And then lack of money, okay, yeah, so great. Time and money, okay. Um, we have, we asked the opposite question, why the following have been helpful in regards to fair? So people have found tools very helpful, okay. We had the opposite lack of tools was also a problem. So, okay, so we, 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 tools seems to be something we have to go and, people understand fair, that's extremely helpful to, people, to uh, facilities. Leadership, yes, very helpful. And funding. Okay, so actually, it seems like understanding fair and having like a supportive administration are the two things that people care about. So, um, okay. And then we asked, like, what would help you the most in becoming more fair? So, um, training on fair principles, yes. Um, connecting to implementation networks from your like, discipline, yes. Better tooling, okay, yes. Okay, people like tools. Having more time and organizational support, yes. So those are like the two biggest things. Okay, so this is this is this is helpful to understand the kind of landscape here. So, so coming back to us, like like what kind of things can can we do to help provide? We can't give people we, we can't provide more time. We don't have organizational support, but we could probably look at tooling and maybe these other ones and connecting to networks and training. So, in in actual in actual interviews what came up a lot is actually the training part like people had quite ha, had say i wish that there was some some way i could or some resources i could point people to or that there was a way that um that uh people with my facility can at least um have like have, have a better idea of what they're of what to do especially we're talking like domain scientists or researchers who who um who who especially more established ones who, have, who are not clear or don't have um, not up to date on all, all the all the practices. So the question is like if so, is there a common piece of training that we can share among all among among facilities? Like this is kind of like many hands make light work. Like can we do something that that works together? Is are is there anything out there? So there are of course things out there. So. There's a lot of fair training already, but it's kind of uneven. Like I just pulled up four things, but it's it's but it's it's a lot of things. So some of this stuff, I mean, is high level overview. Some of these things are maybe in, incomplete, like the library carpentry one. I think that is still under under design, so that's not even quite done yet. So um, we we uh, we we undertook a a. Um, so we, we start what well, we're in the process of. So this is a work in progress of undertaking a survey of what is out there. And we we've, we've started trying to categorize things. And it seems like what we're, what we're finding is, is that there's a lot of resources out there, but they're not necessarily all geared toward active researchers. Some of them, and, and then they seem to be of uneven um, points of what they're trying to do. Like some of them, maybe some of them have a summary, but that's it. Maybe it's like, like short posts or maybe some of them are very detailed, but in a very domain specific way. Or, um, so what we're trying to do is, is just kind of, you know, we hope to do, and hear, hear your thoughts on, are there, are there ways that we can um, make something useful together? So, okay. So it, before we kind of get, in, get into the breakout sessions, what, one thing I want to at least start with is, um, is bring up this framework. So you can't actually, um, hold on a second. Maybe I can move this. Can I move this? No. Okay, well, there's a link. This is, the link's also in the, in the shared document. So this is, this is a very useful frame, frame reference for thinking about documentation. I don't know if you've seen this before or not. But the idea is, is, that, is that there's not, documentation is not just a monolithic thing. This provides a way of actually separating it, what it is into um, different types of, of things. So depending on also what the goal is of it. So like, so um, you, you have, so let's see, let's starting in, in, the, in, the, like in the top left, like you have tutorials. Tutorials are for, have, for, for learning about something, but also like the more action orientated. So whereas maybe on the explanation, that's more, that's more understanding like the conceptual work behind something, but it's maybe not so much about how you do it. And then reference, of course, everyone knows reference, it's, it's usually very detailed, it's also very dry. So it's detailed and, but it is also exact. So, and then in the fourth quadrant, the how-to guides, these, these are things that are 
and their action, but they're, they aren't necessarily trying to get you to necessarily, they're not supposed to get, helping you to get, understand something, they're more just helping you kind of get started doing something. So this is a very useful framework, and I definitely encourage you, if you've not seen this before, to, to, to uh, go and look, look, look through this, this, this guy, Daniel Picadilla. He's, he's very interesting and useful to look at. So I'm thinking like, like this is maybe a good way of trying to frame out the document, the, the, the problem that we have here. And as we have a lot of these reference guides, but like, but where are they in here? Some of them either seem to be in the explanation part, but they don't actually tell people how to do anything or, or what or anything action oriented is what you, what, you, what you want. Or they, or maybe things, or they tend to be probably like a, like a tutorial. It's very simple, but it doesn't actually help a researcher who doesn't want to go through a tutorial, they want to know just specifically how do I do the thing I need to do. So, okay. So, all right. Um, I'm gonna just, I think we have a break, I think, oh yeah. So we have a breakout now, but first I wanna say, are there any questions or what, do people have any thoughts or, or so far in this? Where am I, okay. Yes, okay. So, so one thing that I'm so one thing that I'm curious with, or that I, I wish to actually have a, more of a discussion on, is is that is first of all is is like like where are people coming from? Is this something that that makes sense, or is this something that, um, that is sustainable in your organization? Does your organization see this as a as like a desire or a need, or like is some, something that is in as worthwhile for you to do, or is this or that you have time to work on, or is this something that is like not sustainable, like not necessarily like a sustainable aspect. So um, I was thinking that we would probably, uh, okay, so yes. I want to respond to a question that you posed earlier. Can we please get the mic? Oh yeah, sorry. Yes, for sure. to respond to a question that you proposed earlier, which was with regard to when you look through this landscape of all these existing resources, you wanted to find if there was this core or like some nugget like or some part of it that you could take that you could apply across your facilities. But yet, in the learning experience, oftentimes people need to feel more connected to the material. So I feel like there's this kind of challenging balance where you have, where you need to maybe find some core materials, but then develop them out to really connect to the people within a particular facility and their particular needs. That, that's actually the solution we took at my institution for our training, is we made this foundational stuff, and then we chose specific examples within our domain so that people would feel more connected to the examples and feel more like value in going through the learning experience. Yeah, that's yeah, that's good. So it in, in actually in so in in your so then is the foundational. Do you provide both things to people who are to do you provide both the foundational and the other thing to to the to your users? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's well. That's that's exactly. It, it seems like this is and I say like we're. Kind of getting started, so I was, I'm trying to cast out and see what's what's out there. But yes, I I I, I do I do feel like 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 no one thing no no one thing is going to fit everyone as is. So there's definitely going to be have to be a customization aspect to it, especially in the sense that some 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 faci facilities have widely different like um, goals, and some of them some of them are user facilities where it's like. It's like they just provide an instrument. You you bring your own samples. You bring your own computer. You collect your data, and then you kind of go off and analyze it. And others others are definitely more orientated around like collect um, like, like like actually collecting and providing data to people, and then trying to like, then build like a like a community around like using that data. Like so, and so that's kind of a different. There's like two different needs. So that's. This is exactly what I'm trying. Like this boundary is, 
is a hard one. That's exactly what I'm trying, but I think is 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 the heart is what the, we're trying to find out, or or exactly what what is what like what is useful and what is useful enough to be in the core, but that is not. But yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is actually that's a good point. Is, is what I'm going to say. So okay. So for the um, these breakout questions. I was wondering, I, I was thinking that we would, um, uh, well, so we were, um, maybe, I, I think that maybe, maybe we'll, we will first, um, uh, just maybe, uh, I'm trying to think, we don't have like maybe 10 people in here. So maybe, maybe we, do you want to discuss this as a group right now, or maybe better if we discuss them as, as small groups and then, and then Report out to the big group. I don't. What do you think is? I think we're small enough. Maybe we can just do it all. Yeah, yeah. I think we're small enough. So, okay. So, okay. So for the so for the first question, then yeah. So like like do do you see a need for this like for training? And is there a difference in, in your in, in your institution between like internal people and external people? And like, and what is it, like what is you know like maybe it's a show of hands like, like first of all like how many people belong to an institution that like provides data to others okay okay so the majority and and and, and then are, is there like and then how many people like belong to something like a more of a user facility where you have an instrument that you provide access to okay to yes. <laughs> Um, no, it could be anything. I mean, like, what, what kind of, what instrument do you? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was just curious. Um, when you say instruments, you know, do you mean physical, digital, or both, or is there something? I would just think that the fair guidelines could mean pretty different things, um, depending on if you're talking about physical or digital or anywhere in between. But I'm not sure if that's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like, like once you yeah. Right, okay. So yeah. So that, actually, so I take your question to me. Actually, like, is it something like with like physical samples versus something that collects data and then it's, and then it's like electronic data? In, in that case, in, in my mind, I was thinking you collect the data and it's like electronic, not necessarily physical samples. Yeah. So, so okay. So okay. So maybe let's just actually let me ask the second question. So like like like. Does your does your organization it, do they consider like this instruction on in user instruction as part of your mission or is it something that's like is like beyond? And then this can, can also include developing possibly like a community around around using like your open source you know, like your your data your your data too. Core, yeah. Okay. Is there a so does that mean like 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 is so that is this something that could be like like sus, that could be sustainable or is this something that that would be in scope for some kind of work or is this something that or um, okay yeah me yes oh yeah Mike or. I would like to know what people think is enough money for it or enough time yeah. because in my institution, as an institution, no matter what's whole oceanographic, we really value the education and training and but we just don't have enough resources to put towards it. So a rule of thumb I often try to use so I have heard the 30% used in terms of 30% of a budget being aligned with data management and the training with it being a small portion of that. Mm -hmm. But that's the biggest number I've ever heard, 
right? Yeah. I heard 10% more commonly, right, in terms of how much a project budget would be aligned with data management and helping people to, to do that. You noted in, in your slide you had everybody, or a good proportion of your respondents said they didn't have enough budget to do the training yes. portion, right? But well, what, is, what is an appropriate amount? How much do we need? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, I oh, and plus I think this is also something where where it, you're 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 never going to, yeah. This is something where like you it, you could always do more. That's always the the problem with a lot of this. Like 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 you can so there's always more or, or something that's that, or some other aspect that you can address. So the question here is is actually more about like 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 what like how much can you do with like wh like what's what are the big things that help your users the most. So it's it's all like everything comes down was going to come down to like trade offs. So like like is like so the, now the question is, is is like what so then what do you want your users to do? Or <laughs> what is actually is the goal? And that's actually the, the next set of questions. But so but my so but actually but so like looking at number three like like what does your facility already have in place? Like do, does anyone have like a training or something in place? Do you have are there are there video? Do you have like provide like links or videos on your website? Is there anything like in, like in person or like in person instruction? What what do what are people providing now? I'm just as, as a, curious as a survey and like and like do you think it is it is a, it is like effective or have you had comments on that? Yeah. Thank you, this is Christine uh, Leon. Um, so one of the things that we struggle with a lot is uh, people come to our big data sets. We have, uh, we have data observational sampling, we've got instrumented data, we have remote sensing, and they really want like specific tutorials about how to use particular data products. And um, we think that even though that's within our our scope to help people use the data, we really want people to update that data. There's so much of our money is toward um, actually collecting the data, processing the data, making it available to the public. And so I think that is hard. So we have a lot of general tutorials that are like how to understand hyperspectral data or how to um, pull in you know basic data set into R and things like that. But to uh, specifically go into all of the different data products that we have is, is quite challenging. And, um, I just wonder if other facilities are also struggling in that direction, particularly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put on a different hat for Christine. I'll put on the Ocean Observatories Initiative hat. So one of the reasons why I'm interested in this session is because um, we're presently figuring out what types of resources we'll provide out to our users of our new resource, which is our Jupyter Hub, essentially a, a data proximate computing environment. And we have the same questions. We, we can't we can't put out something too specific because then it will only serve a very small proportion of the user base. Um, but we, so what do you start with? You start with just what you just said, right? How to import a particular type of data. <laughs> so that I understand. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, that's a hard one too, because especially with Jupyter Hub, because it's like, it's like what what yeah there's so many ways like what level do you meet the people using the using the product like do you treat it as like do you need to start at the beginning or where is the beginning for that or is it just how you use bring in and work with your, your data specifically is yeah yes there is i think and i think we've we've seen and we've seen we've seen a wide variety of approaches to this so i think probably the most i would Think developed would be like would be LIGO, where they they not only have like like a whole set of online tutorials that start from like the beginning, like so they're actually like their tutorials online are, 
and they start at the beginning of like this is you, this, you open, download this file, open this file, and then run these commands on it like in, like Python, and this is and this is how you work on it, and then it, it progresses from there, and then they, um, and then that one and that and I I did the first few, and I don't not have a background in um, in physics, so but it was. It was fine. It was actually good enough that I could show other people, so that was useful. But then, but then, and then they also have have in person and like once a year they have an in person session for people who are interested in learning, and they also have an online session which has started tracking like around two thousand people a year for their, who are interested in you know gravitational waves and working with the data. Now I don't think everyone completes the course, but at least they kind of start the course. But that seems like a lot of effort to develop such a course. And to develop training, so I, I, I think I see that as one end of the spectrum, and then another end of the spectrum is is like you you say that your data is available at this like you can download it like from like this FTP site or something. So like 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 there's definitely a spectrum too. Of, so um, I think so that's what I, that's what I'm trying to. I think these are the hard questions: is like is it how much effort is enough for the initial people, and how you do something that is that is general enough. That 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 it, that is that you do not have to keep redoing it, and but also that's specific enough that it feels like like it is like people can connect with your data specifically, and this and this seems to be a problem that a lot of that we've heard from many from different facilities. So this is why I, I I'm trying to like trying to figure out like what would be the like the core pieces that we want to, or 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 is there possible that we can that we can have like various like more defined thing work together to develop some common pieces but then also have it customizable or you can add your own to it so especially especially for things like okay like especially for things that are common that are maybe or maybe we can provide pointers to existing resources i think that's the other thing too there's a lot of resources out there it's hard to know to know go in so it can't can we provide resources to things that are to people who are like to python or Jupyter notebooks in general and then you only need to worry about about the additional pieces for your facility. And then the, the other, the, another, okay, so, yeah. And then also, all right, let me, let me go to the other breakout questions. And so this is what we, the other thing we wanna know is, is like, it's like, what do you want your users to know after this training? Like, like, like what, and what forms of documentation do you think would be, would, are most helpful to your users? Like, are they, are they looking for, do they have time to, to like? Do, how much time do they have to read? Like, do they are they going to read it? Like, do they want like? Or is it is it like? Do they want videos? I mean, I don't. Or do they? Who, I don't know. Maybe they want videos. This, and then are there already existing resources that you've used that would be good that would be good to share? So, yes. Or, or, if, or if these things are developed, like I definitely like, which, 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 which our um, working group is going to start working or is starting to work on over this next year, then, then like, then, then these, what, what, what would be good things to bring back to you? Like, what would, like if someone gave you, if you, there was a, if there was these resources available, what would you like, what would be helpful to you for your, for what you're hoping to accomplish? Yes. Hi, this is Terry. I'm with Oak Ridge National Lab, and I work on two long-term projects from the data curator, but we have project archives, and we've been operating for 10, 12 years on these projects, so they're long-term. That we now have um, a file repository where we're supposed to deposit all of our data. So we have some data sets that were archived 12 years ago, 15 or 10 years ago. So they were following guidelines from then. And so the repository that we have now um, has guidelines and requirements. And so they talk about the bigger principles, and but they've developed a template for the metadata um, tool and for what you're supposed to provide that then meets the fair guide, fair principles, but it's not really um, front uh, foremost for the researchers. 
So it's kind of hidden in the instructions for the tool that you're using. And they've also developed these things called reporting formats. They're not standards because they're not broadly um, discussed. They were within this DOE communities um, around the, the ones that submit data to the repository and agreed to uh, meet these requirements. So we have reporting formats on how you do tabular data and reporting formats on how you do a U, uh, UAS data or leaf gas exchange. So there's these little pockets of discipline that decided to get together and look at the fair principles, but develop these guides that were um, specific towards some discipline. Not everybody's implementing them. It's one of those that it's not required, it's highly encouraged, but there are some parts that are required so that you, and they have in their metadata editor uh, a button you can click that says assessment tool. And they develop these behind the scene questions and they'll green if you've met so many of this and red if you've done this or if you didn't put any keywords in, you need to go and do this. So it's, it's again, it's not in your face, it's fair, but it's, it's a tool that you know, researchers would recognize. Oh, this one's red, I need to go do something. But back to the, the other thing I wanted to say is that we feel like we're chasing standards. So now we're chasing fair. Um, and then these other reporting formats and everything. So we have data that we're trying to transfer to our long-term repository, the, the older ones, and just to try to meet the minimum for those. I mean, we're not going way out. It's good enough. Uh, we still need to touch every one of them to make them come up to some minimal standard that was good, was good years ago. It was, it was great. But that's part of the time and effort there's, there's doing things that's now and going forward, how much time and effort, and what do you do with all the, the older data? I mean, if you've got a project and you want to use the older data and you've got this new tool that won't use your data because it's not in the new format. That's interesting. So in, in, that, in that tool, like, like, is there, do you have any documentation around using it, or is it just that you, when you submit something, it has to pass, like, all these requirements? They've developed instructions and tutorials on uh, GitHub that they transferred right. over to a, somehow it translates over to some easier to view website. So this is for ESS Dive. which is a DOE long-term repository for the first science data. They also have, yeah, I, good thing you asked this, they also have workshops uh, once a year, um, and we'll explain how to use their Jupyter notebook, uh, the API service, uh, how do you enter records. It's not discipline specific. They will go generally over this reported format as I mentioned. And sometimes they have listening sessions and then other, they're at, um, there's a large um, principal investigator meeting that we have, and they're always there having uh, workshops or help desk. Are there other, other, are other people working towards Okay. Okay. Are there, um, I think other, is there, like, it, it, so that's, that's useful that this, uh, you have internally developed like, things. Like, are, are people, are anyone, is anyone using like some external resource that you can, that is useful or that you found useful? Like, like, is anyone using like that star for carpentry's fair or anyone using uh, some other developed item? No. Yeah. 
In the oceanographic context that I teach, we use the, um, I'd say the, the introductory lessons from the carbon trees for the um, kind of basis and good enough practices. And then we use the, what you had, you had on the slide, the top 10 fair type of, it was prior to the lessons yes. carbon trees. Yes, Because yeah. they had particular domain specific lessons, one of which was oceanography. So, yes, definitely, I use the carbon yeah, trees okay. materials. Yes. That's actually, yeah. Those seem to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. That that preview, that older fair version that, yeah. Yeah. Is there like so have have you but so when you work with these, like have you tried, has anyone tried making or customizing anything for a particular use case or for your for your own materials? Yeah. Okay. okay. Is there, all right, so. Okay. Does anyone does anyone use does anyone use like try to use like DOIs or citation counts for your data? How do you, how do you, how do people attribute your facility when they make publications or use use it? Maybe I should have made that yeah. Electrical data and stuff about the Department of Energy. Um, we work very closely currently with our users when they go to publish. We're encouraging them to work with us so that their sort of Jupyter notebook is well curated, nicely cleaned up. Um, it's not a scalable solution, but we don't quite have enough requests at the moment that my coworker Zach doesn't hate me. Um, but he goes through fairly. Uh, strategically and make sure to capture orchids for people, um, any publications or identifiers that they're aware of, so that we can populate as much of the DOI metadata as possible. Um, and then we encourage people to cite the uh, data set and workflow in the references of the publication so that at least it automatically gets triggered for the publisher side. He has to go back in and manually create that bi-directional link of the is cited by and cites. Mm -hmm. um, so we try to take care of as much of the fair components as possible for the users. We're still kind of doing some user research on what a DOI request form would look like so that it doesn't have to just go through that, they can just do it virtually. Um, but there's a lot of problems with that, like manually entering the worker ID or, you know, various issues around assigning credit roles, et cetera. So that's going to be down the road, but that is where we're headed at some point. Um, so all those DOIs get then deposited at data site, um, and we are working with data site to try to figure out how to report tracking. So any views on the data site landing page, for example, we're hoping to be able to report back to them relatively soon. So that's kind of how we're trying to get the FAIR principles integrated into research without having to ask too much of the users that they need. Yeah. That's actually interesting. Are do, do, do you mint your own DOI or or do you use a data site for that? Do you like walk away this way? Yes. Yeah. Um, so the Department of Energy leverages the Office of Scientific and Technical Information or OSCE, and they mint the DOIs from data site for us. So. Okay, so it's a big loop. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes, this is a huge problem that um, people care about. Yeah, the data site and someone and someone had previously had problem getting data site reporting the citation counts to work. Although I've been told they're it, that's fixed, but I don't know idea. Yeah. Okay. Good. 
So um, at NEON, we put DOIs on our native product releases and um, made some guidelines available on our website about how to use those in publications. So if someone's using our data, like, you know, um, here's the DOI, here's how you can cite the data. We try to provide that information in multiple places. Um, and so the, we find that the citations are getting better. Um, but aren't there 100% yet, no matter how many places we put that information. Um, but uh, one of the things is that we also provide provisional data, right? It, as soon as the data are available and like the basic QAQC processes, we put them online, but we might come back and have to create a piece later. The provisional data can be changed at any moment. And so we try to alert the users, hey, if you're using provisional data, you're going to want to download a copy of that and make that available with your package, your, out, your research outputs, um, uh, like from another repository, because we can't store every single instance of the provisional data. Um, and then we also provide guidelines for that. We, we want to be fair as a repository, but we also want to promote that the users of our data are then fair when they are publishing their research outputs. And so we have some guidelines on our website about how to do that. And one of the partners we have is the Environmental Data Initiative um, to, to do that. So we can send them over there. There are some, uh, a little, some modifications in the EDI metadata templates that support NEON specifically if they, if they use NEON data. So anyway, my <laughs> long story short, I was wondering if any of your facilities are also dealing with, uh, not necessarily, I mean, everyone deals with problems of citations of data from your repositories, but then do you have ways of like, encouraging this fair use of your data generation after generation of use? Well, you, you mean like indirect, like so, so someone makes a derived data set and then they use it. Yeah. Yeah, you, then someone uses that. Yeah, yeah, so you can find it, you can trace the use. Yeah. From one place to the next. Yeah. I was just going to say, our, the final repository I was talking about, they, they have a, it's a release of CC by four, rather than instructions on there that you're supposed to cite it. But, but then our project, we do, like you're saying back here, is that you include the data set citation in the references section. But I don't know that we have something explicitly written out as to how you sh to other users other than the people in our project that hear me harp on it all the time about putting it in the reference section. But that's um, out there in the world. I regret that our earlier citations did not use the word data set in there. So now there's little brackets where you can, and there probably was then, uh, that we didn't set it up that way, that you can put data set in your citation. Like if you get something from a website or a blog post or a newspaper or something, you should put it in there. That helps with the metrics, is what I understand. Um, because sometimes journals, I've had uh, researchers say the journal won't let them put the data set in the reference section. They'll refuse to let them do that. Um, and I know there's a group, including Shelly Stahl, who's with uh, AGU, who's been trying to push on journals and also work with CrossFit uh, to actually pull those in for metrics. Again, it's kind of hard to know which ones are data sets unless tomorrow. But I like your quick more instructions. I really like thinking about this concept of a synthesis data set and how you would help the end user in making that synthesis data set more fair. Right, so I'm thinking in my head, like, I have, by the way, I have not taught that. I Usually, we, when I teach about fair data, we teach about primary data sets. 
that are going to NSF funded repositories often, right, or NOAA funded. Um, I think about it and I think the R is the most important, right? So the, it's the onus on the provider of this synthesized data set to deal with the R. And I think it'd be very hard. I think it, the narrative aspect of describing how that derived product was created and how you could reuse it would be very hard. Uh, I don't know if I'm completely following, but we, we publish both. Uh, I publish raw primary data sets in our repository, and then I publish derived data sets. And in the derived data set metadata, it just cites the primary data set and has a workflow as to how they, they derive their product from the primary data set. But in their paper, they only put the DOI for their derived data set. So only if you went to that data set's landing page would you be able to see the raw data because they didn't, they're not publishing with the raw data, they're publishing with their products that they created from the raw data. So we just have a way in our repository to, to track um, which data sets that the secondary data set came from, but the authors only say the, the the secondary data set in the paper. I curate an institutional repository at the University of Idaho. So um, where I see this the most is with um, remote sensing data, where uh, the researchers have so much data that a lot of repositories will reject them due to size, so we'll publish the raw data for them. Um, into DOI for them, publish the metadata, and then once they start writing products for specific use cases, then they can decide to publish their secondary data set somewhere else, or a lot of times we'll, we'll do it for them as well. So, yeah, so I, I, like I've worked with one researcher who had all raw data, and then built several different models from that data for wildlife habitat, wildlife forage, and they were all published in different papers, but they all came from the same raw data set. That's, yeah, that's, that seems to be the challenge with these derived synthesis data sets is finding a home for them because, um, especially for like facilities like 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 like, like if it's just some rant like if someone derives your data like you, you don't necessarily want to host that data or that derived set so it needs to go somewhere else but but finding a home for that is challenging um especially if they don't have like an, an institutional repository that will take it and so i'm wondering like are there do you have size limits on your on that on the raw data deposit or how is that I currently don't have size limits other than what my server can handle. Okay. But I am also kind of restricted in that I can only curate data for a University of Idaho research, researcher or one of their collaborators. Right. But if I had a derived set, if I had someone with a derived data set that I couldn't publish, that needed to go to like a generalist repository because there's no, no, no domain specific repository that wants it for some reason. There's a way we could link it, the raw data to the derived data using a related resources tag on the new DOI. Okay, and do, do you actually one, one, uh, one last question is, do you have training or something developed for how you do this process or for or the pause of the? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Um, I've created my own like forms that people fill out because when, when I got hired, there wasn't anything, and talking to my coworkers, it sounded like every data manager before me just had their own way of doing it as well. Yeah. So I, I would say that is a, 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 a downside of what I do is that when people leave, it seems like their knowledge leaves with them. Right. Yes. Okay. Um,
good. <laughs> all right, so, all right, so I, I want to, yes. Is there a, so, um, I think my, my last question is going to be, like, is there a, um, is, is in your experience with your researchers, like, like what, do you have an idea of what kind of documentation or what kind of training would be the most, would be useful to, to them? Like fits, fits what they're trying to do fits, or fits what you're trying to do? Like, like do, do they, do they want, like, is it a, um, yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to try and like, like, like what, what would be, what, if, if you could, what would be useful to you? I think the question is, is, is what would you want? Like, do you, like, is, is are these in that, using that breakout, like tutorials, do they want tutorials? Do you want short, like little things, like just describing, this is like, is it very how to step by step, this is it? Do, is, it is the conceptual aspect missing? Like, do you want your researchers to understand it conceptually? Is there uh, and what helps what helps further further your mission the most? Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's a very that's a very big question. I, but I think I'm trying to I'm trying to yeah understand like um, what what's the best what's the best place to like, meet meet your your um your users. You're using the word users, but in oh. my head, I'm, I'm kind of categorizing contributors to a repository, which would be people creating the FAIR data that go in yeah. a repository, and then people that use data from a repository. When I, when I think of uh, users, okay. that's like a facility that's providing out data that may or may not have been contributed by someone okay. outside. Yes. So, and it's very different training. Yes. I okay. To those who Thank you. The data as compared to those who use the data. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. In my head, no. This is that's a fair point. In my head, I was thinking people who were like contributing data to your repository. But yeah, there's also yeah, they are they are. Yes, they are much different, and and that's also why like because like, users yeah users. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, they are very different. So, like, like, so in which, so actually, for the people who are using your data or your or like community, like this community to cultivate, like, what resources, what do do they want? Like, what what is their experience with data? Like, is it is it graduate students? Is it or what are you waiting for? There? If we're speaking of users of data yes. from SMBs, yes. I think a really good analogy is um, what's going on in the NASA Earth data community yeah. where they have, okay, so I'm an outsider to that. Is there anyone here from NASA Earth data? No. Okay. So yesterday I literally spent two whole sessions where I was like browsing the NASA Earth data resources and noted that they had separate DACs, like they have, and they have all that acronyms, because I don't know their acronyms and all that, but each of these, think of it like one of NSF's funded major facilities. They are very different from each other, but there are some commonalities. So this Earth data is what's trying to bring them together under a common, and it's really what I found in the afternoon session yesterday, the OpenScape's effort was an effort that is trying to kind of cross across the DACs to find those commonalities and help onboard people. They even used wording for this, like onboarding and fledging or something, where they're onboarding people into kind of the core aspects of like what works in the Earth data system across the DAX. And then I'm assuming they would also get into specifics within specific DAX, but I didn't get that far yesterday. But I think you could learn, yes. I think NSF major facilities could learn from how NASA is doing that. Although, understandably, I think that NSF might be even more heterogeneity, more heterogeneity than the DAX are. Oh, no. Yeah, no. yeah thanks. That is, that is, yeah. I, yes, I was in one of those sessions yesterday, too. And yeah, there's, it seems like, an, there's a lot. 
think that's a good good place to look. Okay. All right. All right then. Well, so I think that um, are there right. Well, so I don't know if there's any other. Do you have anything else you? Okay. I think this is kind of has helped a lot. I I definitely appreciate this. This is a good discussion. I think um, if I think we have some contact info, but I think um, if you have other things you bring up, or if you're interested, or if you want to stay in touch with what we come up with and, and try to, um, uh, in terms of developing this uh, resources, or at least at least our survey of resources that are out there. And these are, um, so, okay, with that, I think I think we'll call, I think we'll, we'll end this unless someone has a last minute comment or, okay. All right, great. All right, thank you very much. Yeah.